Welcome to Chapter 4. In the last session, we discussed that like patrol officers or deputies receiving the next call, investigators or detectives are con continually receiving the next case investigation. Outside of this cycle, crime and intelligence analysts are able to take disparate information and provide depth and context to allow for investigators to focus on continually gathering information and following up on leads. The analyst's work effectively presents a bigger and broader picture of the crime problem. In this final session, we will examine how the work of crime and intelligence analysis can maximize resource allocation, whether from a patrol or investigative investigative capacity. In a time where budgets are tight and getting tighter, the discussion will provide comfort in investing in crime and intelligence analysis, knowing that your other agency resources are optimized efficiently. As we go back and talk a little bit about the nuisance calls for service, many departments have calls for service that represent the greater majority that take more time than others. Some of these calls that you can see represent a majority of crime are nuisance calls for service, alarm calls for service, and assault calls for service. Crime and intelligence analysis using CAD data can inform the frequency and location of these types of calls to ensure that staffing in these areas at these times is appropriately adequate. Analysts can also identify strategies to combat repetitive calls for service through more longer-term strategies like problem-oriented policing. Again, looking at places that have repetitive calls for service to try and do a reduction of those so that, again, your personnel are maximally optimized and used. As it relates to response times, analysts can produce a variety of charts that show increases and decreases in response times. What is extremely important, however, is that they provide the context of what these increases could there be the result of. In this particular case, it could be increases in signals coded as priority one calls for service. Maybe in the past, you've actually changed different types of calls from priority two or three to priority one. Changes in call handling of priority one for calls for service. Maybe in priority one calls for service, you previously needed one officer and one backup and now you have requested one officer and two backup officers. If you made changes such as the way that calls are handled, that can also increase your response times in the way that people get to those calls. You may have increases in your communication center handling time. Maybe you've had a recent turnover in the number of dispatchers that you have, and you have newer dispatchers that aren't as efficient yet at doing dispatching of calls. So they're handled fast. They're handled a little bit slower than they have been in the past and takes a little bit more time to get to the patrol officer to actually respond. And then something simply outside of con the control of your department at all is that your increases in patrol travel time may be due to construction on main roads, areas where you may have roads that are blocked or one way or there's construction happening, which is slowing down traffic overall, and overall slows down your officer's response to those calls. Analysts providing the context of response time increases can show you ways to go back and make changes to these. Maybe you've decided that when you, you're doing call handling associated to one officer and two backup officers, you decide to go back to one officer and one backup. Maybe you decide to mentor your communication center dispatchers by another senior dispatcher in order to reduce the additional handling time that you've had during this period of time because of a turnover in your communication center. Maybe you work with your city public works to determine how long the construction is going to be, maybe potentially alternate ways to get to specific locations that may be key, that maybe you have a lot of calls for service every year. There are ways in which response time analysis conducted by your crime and intelligence analyst are really able to address these issues to make you effective and efficient in your manpower. These increases in the context of which the analysts provide can re directly relate to how you deploy your resources. Knowing that you have resources out there also may be something that you need to address shift deployment of resources. 
The chart you see on the screen is actually designed to show the number of units, calls for service units that you have working at a given time, as well as the number who are available to handle a call for service. The yellow line represents a goal, a goal of 45% free time allotted for patrol. Any place that the red line does not meet the yellow line means that you have a reduction in staffing. You don't have enough resources for the call volume at that particular time. This type of a chart produced by a crime or intelligence analyst is being able to address for you the time of day in which you have deficiencies in your resources. In this particular chart, you see that the deficiency, the yellow line being above the red line here, is between 10 and 1 in the afternoon, almost 2 in the afternoon, between 5 and 9 in the afternoon, and then again after 8 o'clock at night into approximately midnight. The shifting of your resources based on charts, graphs, and products produced by analysts can provide context in where you need to deploy your resources by time of day. Time of day is not the only approach, however. You also need to look at where your, your resources are deployed. So you have to look at geographic deployment of your resources. And crime and intelligence analysts, through something as simple as the map you see here, are showing areas that are having an increase and decrease in crime. These are areas in which a successful policing strategy has been done in the areas that show blue, they have the highest decreases, and areas that are tipping point or are having crimes in a larger proportion are the area that you see in red. Something as simple as this can also help you in determining where you might be having crime occur again. It's not just a simple hotspot map of where crimes occurred in the past. It's showing you what's increasing and what's decreasing. And again, something like this is simple as deploying your resources for a couple different ways. Number one, geographic deployment for a particular crime-related series that you might have. Maybe your patrol resources you send to these areas. Maybe also you send an investigative or specialized area, your narcotics, maybe a robbery particular squad, maybe a task force composed of a robbery and burglary detective, as well as some other detectives who are subject matter experts. These particular types of products produced by your crime and intelligence analyst allow you to truly send resources that are necessary to the area by the type of resource that you need in the area. It's constantly speeding up this process of making sure you're in the right place at the right time. In terms of investigative case assignment, when you really think about investigators, the process of which investigators receive cases is something that's constantly flowing. Investigators are constantly receiving the next case, just like your patrol officers and deputies are receiving the next call for service. Crime and intelligence analysts provide an assessment of investigative assignment. And in doing so, they can review things such as the number of cases per detective, the outcome measures for an individual unit, what is happening, what's successful, what's not. They can look at a comparison of similar units. Maybe you want to compare a unit that handles auto theft with maybe robberies that are associated to carjacking, simple events that may be similar in nature. The comparison of these types of things allow you to see whether or not you need more detectives at the end of the day. You need more people in a specific investigative area. Is that particular crime type starting to increase or peak? Is it starting to be a tipping point? Analysis like this can actually inform decision-making to associate your increases in investigative unit staffing. If you decided to just simply take two detectives from burglary and put them in your robbery or homicide unit just on a whim, somebody's probably going to ask you, what did you do to make that decision? Crime and intelligence analysis can produce products that allow you to make that decision smart, effective, and informed using data to make it defendable, not only to you and to your staff, but to others within your department and even people who maybe outside of your department are looking at the way that you allocate your resources. You also have crime trends that emerge. Over time, crime changes. We know that events have happened in which 
For example, auto theft is in a large is in a smaller proportion of crimes than it used to be due to technology in the auto industry that prevent the theft of automobiles. So forecasting and crime trends really shows you where you have increases that are of potential need into the future. It's not simply looking at where you have a problem today. It's saying, where are you likely to have a problem in the future? And how should you address that? Something as simple as the forecasting chart that you see here shows a comparison from 2011 to 2012. And you notice here it shows that the forecast says that approximately there's going to be approximately 200 more violent crimes during this period, an increase of 8.33%. Of Something as simple as this showing decreases in your property crime, approximately 300 decreases in your property crime on this chart, may mean you need to shift resources from your investigators or your detectives who follow up on property crimes and shift them to resources that follow up on violent crime. Again, thinking of ways to actually address these issues. A couple other examples include forecast increases in grand thefts, the result here of increasing price of metal and the lack of scrap metal regulation. As your grand thefts start to increase up, as they start to tip a certain way, and you know that it's related to your scrap metal and your scrap metal regulation, then it's important for you to adjust the resources to either address that problem or work on enforcing scrap metal differently than it has been in the past. That has to be part of your objective throughout your department. As I just mentioned, we've had a decrease of automobile theft in many jurisdictions, often the result of improvements in the automobile technology and the automobile industry. What we've seen in a lot of places actually is an increase in carjacking as well, though, because again, the need for people and the desire for people to have vehicles, it's, just, it's a little harder to do with measures that are preventing it when it comes to automobile theft. But taking a vehicle by force through a carjacking is something that is easier to do now. And so therefore, we have seen increases in carjacking as a result of the, of the decrease in automobile theft. Again, knowing that means that you have to devote more resources to your violent crimes to address that particular type of issue. Identification can be utilized for adjustment of your investigative personnel or task forces with a variety of subject matter experts. Once an analyst produces this type of work, you can really focus on getting the right people in the right places at the right times in order to address these emerging crime-related issues. Crime and intelligence analysis provide guidance as it relates to deploying your resources to address high proportions of calls for service by type, again, the nuisance-related calls, time, places where you don't have enough resources. In the example I showed on the shift deployment between 10 and 1 in the afternoon, 10 in the morning, 1 in the afternoon, and then again, location, where you have areas that are increasing or decreasing and where you optimally need your people. Ensuring investigative functions are appropriately staffed for your maximum benefit. Making sure you have the right people in the right times. And then adjusting your agency resources to new and emerging crime problems, as I showed when we talked about forecasting. There are times in which you have to address new and emerging crime problems, and that means to devote your resources in that direction as well. More effective and more efficient resource allocation can lead to a reduction in overall manpower costs and overtime costs. These cost-saving measures can easily be diverted to equipment and training, but most importantly should be in invested in crime and intelligence analysis, something that actually got you to better and maximizing resource allocation. And the investment of crime and intelligence analysis long-term is extremely important. Crime and intelligence analysts providing all of the above ensures that resources are deployed efficiently and effective. And when you do that, you are working as a smarter organization. And it allows for crime and intelligence analysis to be invested in for the long term. Closing up, this particular operations presentation really talks about the fact that you have different ways that Crime and intelligence analysis can provide value to something as simple as your patrol operations, expanding it from simple calls for service to something more complicated and a larger systematic problem. Crime and intelligence analysis can address investigations by providing a variety of leads 
that allow for detectives to be on the street and getting more information to paint the picture while analysts do the work of combining what that picture looks like from the data that you already have, the data of the past and even some of the data of the present. By looking at the ways that crime and intelligence analysts can really maximize and expand patrol operations and investigative capabilities, you overall allow crime and intelligence analysis to maximize resource allocation for your department. Maximizing this resource allocation allows for more efficient and effective departments running to work smarter, not necessarily harder, and to allow in an ongoing investment in crime and intelligence analysis. That concludes Chapter 4. Thank you for joining us today. If you're interested in more information, please contact us at the Matrix Demonstration Project at cebcp.org.